The magic of a gray background. When you understand the tools of lighting and the inverse square law, you can take a gray background and make it anything you want. White, gray, black, and also any color you can imagine. If I could only choose one background, only buy one background, it would be gray because it gives me the most versatility. Let's pop over to the studio and I'm going to show you just how easy it is to get a wide range of results from a single gray background and to do it quickly. I love shooting on a gray background because I can turn it into anything that I want it to be. If someone told me you can only have one background to choose from in the studio, I would go gray because I can make gray light gray, dark gray, black, white, or any color that I want it to be. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to take you through and just show you quickly how I can transform this gray background to be anything I can imagine. This is going to be really useful for you if when you're first starting off, you only want to purchase one single background, but want it to have a lot of versatility. To get these different tonalities, I'm going to be using the inverse square law, which we've already talked about a lot. And I'm going to be changing the distance from my subject to the light and from the light to the background and the subject and the light to the background, it's moving all of those things together. And because I'm moving the light and changing distances, I will be using my light meter to save me time. And this will also show you again, how I would use a light meter. So my starting settings, I'm going to start at one 200th of a second, uh, ISO 200, and then I'm going to meter to know what my aperture should be. So I'm gonna start there. In my meter, ISO 100, 1 200th of a second, let's figure out my aperture. All right, so pointing it back at that main light source, the only light source in this scene. And it tells me I should be at an aperture of F9. So setting my aperture to nine, and I'll know without having to mess around, it's going to be the correct exposure. Okay, so we got this shot and I've got kind of a, a rich gray background, it's not light, it's, it's a little bit darker. What can I do if I want it to say, maybe go solid black? How do I make that background completely black? Well, one of the things I can do is I can move the light closer to the subject because the light falls off faster, closer to the subject. So it's gonna make the subject very bright, the light will fall off quickly and it won't reach the background. So it'll go black or it'll get darker. So let's first move that light in. And when I move the light in, I'll have to meter again because when I move this in, it gets brighter, closer, makes the exposure brighter. So let's meter so I know what aperture is appropriate. All right, same thing. All right. So it's giving me about an F13. All right, same thing. So comparing those two frames, the background did get darker, but it's not black. It's not completely black. So what I could do is I could move it in even closer, make use of that fall off of light, or I could move the light and the subject further from the background. So it puts even more distance between them, which makes it even darker, even less light is going to reach the background. So let's try that. So I'm gonna move the light back, and I'm gonna move my subject away as well, keeping them nice and close together. I'm gonna to meter again, just to make sure I've got the exposure right. Great, same thing. The distance between them didn't change, so the exposure didn't change, which makes perfect sense. It's what it should be. All right. All right, so now I'm getting closer to that dark black. One other trick is if I want it to be really black and for some reason I'm in a small space, I can't back up any further, no problem. Don't forget, you can feather the light a little bit. Just changing the angle slightly, it's kicking more of the light away from that background. That's going to get the background even darker. So one more time. And now that background is pretty much pure black. But let's say that you're not going for a dark dramatic portrait. You actually wanted a lighter gray. Well, how do I make it lighter gray? Okay, what I can do is I can move my subject back. Now, even if I keep my light source in the exact same position, because I've moved the subject closer to the background, they're more of a similar distance, they'll be more similarly lit. Don't forget in that first inverse square law video, this would be like putting both the background 
as well as the subject further away from the light source, which means they're more similarly lit. So they're more similarly lit, that gray is going to get lighter. So let me take a meter reading again. Okay, so it puts me at 6.3. It tells me the aperture I need to be at. So 6.3. Great. So it's exactly as I said, background gets lighter. It's actually closest to the exposure or to the tonality it actually is in reality. Um, I could make it a, try to get, make it a little bit lighter uh, by moving that subject even further back, but I'm not gonna get it white because it's not a white background. So, so far I've been able to make it dark gray, that's where we started, completely black, and then I've been able to make it a lighter gray. So what happens if I wanna make it white? I'm shooting a, a portrait, a headshot, and I'd like it to be on a white background. This is an instance where if you're shooting on gray, you need to introduce a second light. So I'm gonna introduce another head. I'm gonna point it right at the background behind the subject. And by over lighting that gray, I'm, I'm lighting it so that it's brighter than it actually is, it'll make it white. What I've done is I've taken a bare bulb and pointed it at the background. And the reason that I've done this is I want as much spread of light as possible. Uh, now I could take an umbrella from the side to give me more spread of light. But if I'm, I'm actually having it on the background there, the bare bulb is gonna give me quite a bit of spread. If I add a zoom reflector or something else, it narrows my beam a bit. I can also pull that same light further from the background. It's the bucket of water example. The further it is from the background, the more time that light has to spread out and the larger the surface area it, it covers. So I'm gonna pull it back just a little bit. So now I'm gonna cover a lot of my background and I actually moved this up. Um, it, I could have done this with it further away, but I liked having the subject closer to the light, made the light a little bit softer. So let me just take my meter reading again. Tells me what aperture to be at. Okay, and again, ISO 200, one 200th of a second, and it tells me, so F9, okay? All right, so at F9, once I've lit the background, now I have a completely pure white background. So, so far, I've gotten a pure white background simply by adding another light to overlight this gray background so it's lighter than it actually is. I've gotten pure black by bringing both the subject and the light further from the background, but then also bringing them closer together so the fall off of light is more dramatic. And I've also gotten different tonalities of gray depending on where I place my subject and my light. So I'm able to kind of work with the inverse square law to change the tone of gray. All right, well, guess what? <laughs> I can actually do more. I can actually do a lot more. How about uh, this white background? Now that I've added another light behind it, what happens if I want a gradient of gray? I don't want it to be pure white, but maybe, maybe a focus light that fades out to gray on the edges. This is where I could introduce something called a grid. Or you can actually do make it yourself tools that would allow you to control the light, but I'm going to add a grid. We're going to talk about this in depth later, but what it does is it focuses the light. So now, instead of just having black or gray or white, I actually have gray with a gradient. It adds a little bit more depth, a little bit more texture to the photo. So I'm gonna grab that 20 degree grid. Okay. So here's my grid. I'm gonna place it Perfect. Now let's take a shot and I can actually see that gradient behind my subject. And I have a gradient of tonality. I think it's a little bit too bright, so I'm gonna turn it down so it's a little bit more subtle. Turn down the power of that light. And I'm not doing it mathematically, I'm going by what I think looks good. Taking a shot, seeing how much, how light I want it to be. Yeah. Maybe a little brighter, but it's pretty good. And what I could do if I want to exaggerate this more is I could take it so that the background was black. Remember where we were at before? And so what it would go is it'd go from a light gray to a black on the edges. So I could exaggerate this halo effect. We need to go back to the part where we made the background black. What did we do? We brought the light and the subject closer together and then moved them away from the background. So let me do that as well. 
Great, and again, they're both already pretty far from the background. I feather my main light, so block. some of that light doesn't hit the background. All right, let's meter again. Okay, F14. So now I see a really dramatic gradient. See that gray behind, that little halo of light behind my subject's head that fades away to black. So, so far, black, white, a bunch of different tonalities of gray. We know how to do all of that. I also know how to put a gradient of gray in a halo using a grid behind my subject. But that's not all, because I can also make my background whatever color I want it to be. Anytime that I'm shooting something that's a headshot or three quarter length, I don't change the background paper. I don't put up a new background. If I want a bright color, I usually just add a gel. So I know right now where I'm at, this background, uh, if it's completely black, like if I turn off this background light, it's going to be a black background, right? We're back to where we started in the beginning, making the background black. Now I know if I want it to be any color at all, I can grab a gel, put it on that second light, and color the background. So I can make it red, green, blue, pink. I can actually mix two gels to cut together and make different colors. So let's take a look, and I'll show you how easy it is to make it. Let's try red and blue. All right, so first, let's try blue, and I'm going to take the grid off the light since I don't need it anymore, although I could use it for a gradient. I'm gonna turn the light back on, add blue, and let's take a shot with the blue gel. And I've got this beautiful, beautiful blue background. It's a little bit more focused in the middle because remember, distance makes a difference and it's the inverse square law. It'll be a little brighter in the middle and it'll fade out on the edges. All right, so, Blue looks pretty good. Let's change over to red and see how simple it is. All right, changing it to red. If I want the red to be more even, I can pull the light back away from the background, giving it more time to spread out. Or I could take multiple lights from either side to get it to have an even illumination across the entire background. I'm gonna pull it back just a little bit. And let's try with red. Great, and I'll pump up the power just a little bit. I move the light back. When you move the light back, decreases the power a bit, right? Inverse square law. Ooh, I heard that pop a red. And so now it's a super bright, rich red. And it looks different than if I just had a red background. It has more luminance, more glow to it. And it does have a little bit more of a gradient of tonality, which of course, with multiple lights, I could eliminate. So the reason that I love shooting on a gray background is because I can make it anything I want. If I want it to be a medium gray, I can put my subject closer to the background with my light a little bit further away. And the subject and the background, because they're closer together, will be more similarly lit, giving me an even gray. If I want it to be black, I move the light further away and I move my subject closer to that light, makes the fall off faster, makes less light hit the background, it makes it black. If I want it white, I add another light pointed at that background, turned way up, and it gives me a pure white. If I want a gradient, I can add a grid so that I can have uh, from a lighter gray to a darker gray or to completely black. And if I want it any color at all, I can add a gel. So basically it's every background that I really need all in one.